Hi YouTube, Nintendo Fangirl here, and right now I'm feeling like one of the absolute luckiest Nintendo fans on the planet because I was invited out to try Splatoon 3. <laughs> that is right, and, and try it I did ahead of its release. I'm pretty sure I'm one of very few Nintendo fans at this point in time that have gotten to get their hands on the game, and it was. I got some footage, so I'm so excited to show that and share it with all of you along with my thoughts about everything I got to play. Whoosh. So I basically got to play three modes, the single player campaign, Salmon Run, and of course, Turf War. We played some private battles of Turf War. So starting here, uh, what you see here is level 1-1 in Alterna. That's the name, I believe, of the land for the single player campaign. Or one of the sing part of the single player campaign, something like that. So the story campaign in Splatoon, it's always been about teaching the player about the different weapons and helping them to hone their techniques. While also going through the like cool story. Um, it's usually a pretty simple story, but cool nonetheless. And you also get the opportunity to learn more about the Splatoon universe and more all at the same time. Uh, since I only played three levels, I don't really know any more than all of you do in terms of what the story is totally about, except that the overarching theme of it is that the bad guy now are these mammalians. In Splatoon 2, the bad guys were Octolings, and now we have basically the hairy version of Octolings, which are the mammalians. Get it? Like mammals. I do know that you play as Agent 3, which makes sense, uh, and Callie and Marie, Agent 1 and 2, are present, at least in the portion that I played, because they kind of walked you through some of the very early techniques that you'll learn, as you can kind of see on the screen. What I played in the single player story campaign felt very, very, very much like Splatoon 2, except that obviously the Octolings were now hairy. Lots of enemies and lots of obstacles that you definitely recognize from past story campaigns if you played them before um, because they have to, you know, kind of give you the tutorial of it all. Even if you've had it before, you need the refresher. Just, just go through it. It's all good. I didn't recognize any huge mechanical changes, but you know, let me know if you're looking at this footage and you think I missed something. Um, as far as I can tell, all of the basics are still the basics from Splatoon 2. And if you're comfortable with the, the controls and the gameplay in Splatoon 2, I don't think you're gonna find anything jarring moving over to 3. By the way, the story in this campaign is a continuation from Splatoon 2. Uh, but don't fret if you haven't played it or if you haven't thought about it in a long time. I personally haven't thought about it in a long time. I loved the way the Splatoon 2 story played out. I thought the end battle in the Splatoon 2 story campaign was just chef's kiss. Amazing. Loved it. So I have high hopes that we're going to get something like that for Splatoon 3. But we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but, like I said, don't worry if you haven't played two or if you even haven't played one. It's not the kind of story that you're going to be super confused. It's really like a simple, uh, fun background story just to get you accustomed to all of the controls and the world of Splatoon. You'll be okay, I promise. For me, just like with Splatoon 2, I will definitely immediately be diving into the story campaign when I get Splatoon 3. I think that I really need the practice, I need to get comfortable with the techniques, and I also need to get comfortable with all the weapons, including the new weapons, speaking of. I did get to try out a level that used the new Tri-Stringer crossbow style weapon. So the, the stringers are a new style of weapon in Splatoon. They're like bows or crossbows. Uh, they're basically, there's a string on them. And that's why they're called stringers. Get it? And I thought the Tri-Stringer that I got to play with was so cool. I absolutely loved it. I don't love every weapon in Splatoon. In fact, there's quite a few that I'm just like, nope, I don't, I don't want to play with this. But the Tri-Stringer, I really, 
really enjoyed. There's definitely like an element of strategy, of course, because there is with any weapon in Splatoon, uh, but I love how the jump gives you a nice vertical ink spray. It's really great for if you wanted to shoot a nice vertical line and get a straight move on from there. And I also really like that the little arrows that shoot out or whatever they are, the little um, bullets of ink that you shoot out, uh, they actually explode on a delay. So you can shoot them on a moving target, for example, and as it moves, it takes a few seconds and then boom, take out mammalians, no problem. It's really fun to splat them with. I don't know how it might fare in battle, like in a turf war, but within the story campaign, I enjoyed it a whole, whole lot. All right, so story campaign, great. I would say maybe somewhat predictable. It was pretty much exactly what I expected the story campaign to feel like. Not a complaint, just if you've played Splatoon 2 or even Splatoon 1, you kind of know what to expect with that. Moving on to Sam and Run, I think this was actually my favorite thing that I got to play. So Salmon Run is crazy fun. It's always been crazy fun introduced in Splatoon 2, but I barely played it on Splatoon 2. And the reason is in Splatoon 2, Salmon Run actually existed on a timer. So in Splatoon 2, you could only play Salmon Run certain days, certain times, and I would always log in and be ready to play Salmon Run. And what do you know, wasn't available at that point in time. Everything is changing now. Everything is changing because Splatoon 3 Salmon Run is no longer on any kind of a timer. It's just available all the time to play, which is how it should have been in the first place. But, you know, we'll take what we can get at this point in time. Like, the fact that it's always available in itself is literally a game changer. And it makes a massive difference for people like me who pick up games at weird hours of the day when nobody else is playing. So if you aren't aware, Salmon Run is you have a team of four players. You team up co-op style to defeat Salmonids, which are like the little fish people that come out of the ocean. They're kind of gross. You want to get rid of them. Uh, ASAP. Uh, especially though, the boss Salmonids, which are like the bigger, scarier, slightly more strategic version of these gross fish people. Sorry, no offense, Salmonid people out there. But the boss Salmonids drop these golden eggs, which then you need to pick up and carry over and deposit into a basket. And there's a goal of how many golden eggs you need to deposit each round as a group. So you need to go around making sure that all of the little Salmonids are taken care of, but also making sure to defeat the boss Salmonids and taking their golden eggs and depositing them ASAP. You just do that. That's pretty much the whole how Salmon Run works. All the while, of course, these Salmonids are trying to splat you. So you need to avoid being splatted and also rescue your friendos if they do get splatted. So we played two rounds which is technically six rounds, because there's three rounds per game, of Salmon Run. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat that we lost the first one. We lost in the third round of the first game. And that game, both of the games we played, was set at 10% difficulty. I'm told that it goes up to 200% difficulty. So I have absolutely no idea what... 100 or 200 percent difficulty looks like it was plenty challenging enough in my opinion the 10 percent but we did manage to defeat it in the second playthrough we completed all of our goals uh there was some quick improvement going on i think and overall it was just massively fun that's all there is to it it's just so much fun you feel like a real sense of accomplishment it also has a killer soundtrack just so, so good and it, it's it's really cool style it's just a really fun little game it's good if you want to take a break from doing some ranked or from doing turf war or it might just be what you prefer over those things which is also totally valid i'm so excited 
play more of this because it's, I really did not play it anywhere near enough on Splatoon 2. And the fact that it's 24 hours now, I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to play so much Salmon Run, and I, I can't wait. Of course, if you haven't played Splatoon, you may not be ultra familiar, but you probably have the idea. Turf War is the classic kind of game where it's 4v4, and your goal is to just cover the most turf, ink the most turf, with your color ink. Splatting enemies is part of the, the gameplay because obviously you want to get rid of your enemies so that they're inking less. And at the same time, if you splat them, you get like a nice little area of your ink around where they've just exploded. And you've got uh, your choice of weapons, depending on what you've unlocked. There's plenty unlocked for us to choose from in this case. And you've also got different specials. And uh, in this Splatoon 3, there's actually a couple new things. Like, you can now jump basically out of the ink. I can't think of how to word this correctly because I don't know what it's called. But you can, you can just jump and go in any direction. And you get like a little tiny bit of uh, damage reduction i guess when you do that to be honest in the like couple minutes where i was just kind of learning this i didn't have time to practice <laughs> those techniques so i didn't get to use them pretty much at all i played around a tiny bit and it was easy to do the jumping side to side in different directions out of the ink but i didn't employ that in any true battle style So in my first game, I played with the all-new Splatana, which is like a squeegee katana thing going on. It's new, hasn't been in any of the previous games. It's really fun, but I'll say that it, it seems to really be for like close combat battle, close combat KOs and splats of other uh, enemy members of the enemy team, of course. Uh, not my favorite style of gameplay, to be honest. I prefer to play with some range because I'm not the <laughs> under pressure like that. And I also really tend to prefer on um, inking the turf. It feels like my calling is to make sure all the corners are inked well and stuff like that. By the way, as you're watching this, I never proclaim to be particularly good at Splatoon. I was certainly playing with the motion controls so you can see as it's moving around it's because I'm holding the pro controller and using the gyro in that so as I'm moving up down left right uh, I use that I've always used motion controls for Splatoon I think it's way easier way more intuitive for me so you can um, literally move the controller to help move uh, your character's long vision essentially the map we played on was Scorch Gorge one of the new maps and I thought it was really good I really liked it. I felt like there was a, it was a good size and there was a lot of interesting vertical elements to help you kind of get over to the enemy area, the enemy turf. I, I know this was also shown in the direct, but I really want to gush over the victory screen and how nice it is now. There's these little animated emotes that you get to choose and equip, and I think you purchase them essentially from a catalog in the game. Um, they look really good. They're adorable. I, I just love it. And there's splash tags now. I'm obsessed with the splash tags. They're wonderful. The game also now assigns medals at the end of a battle, which gives like a great little nod to players based on different things they've done in game, like inking the most enemy turf or uh, like splatting the most players and things like that, which is a good way to kind of gauge and feel like a little better about yourself, even if you feel like you may not have contributed <laughs> as much as you could have to a prior game. But just overall, you guys, I, I can't even express how excited I am for Splatoon 3. September 9th, 
It's only a few weeks away, but it cannot come soon enough. I got to try it a lot, but I still can't wait to try out some other things like designing my own locker and making my own splash tags and playing online with friends and of course the table turf battles. I want to play table turf and earn some cards so bad. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you go watch the Splatoon Direct that happened a couple weeks ago now. I'll put a link down below so you have easy access to it. By the way, we did get to play on the new Splatoon 3 Switch OLED systems, which were beautiful, with the Splatoon 3 Pro controllers, also beautiful. Uh, they also matched my nails super, super well. Convenient. Don't forget that there's a world premiere Splatfest happening on August 27th. It's open to everyone. I think, I think this is still available. I hope I'm not incorrect about this. If you pre-order it, if you download it ahead of time, you actually get a seven day Nintendo Switch Online code in your email. So even if you don't have Nintendo Switch Online, go into the eShop right now, download the World Premiere Splat Splatfest, and I believe you'll get a seven day code so you can participate. I hope I'm not wrong about that. The World Premiere Splatfest, it's 12 hours uh, from 9 a.m. PT to 9 p.m. PT on August 27th, which thank, thank goodness it is a Saturday. I love, thank you, that there's a Saturday event because that is like the one day that I can definitely do things. So I will be streaming it for 12 hours on Twitch. I can't wait. Team Rock, the best team, the best hand shape, the best color, the best idol, Team Shiver, the best, just the best, Team Rock. Also, while I was in the city, I picked up um, a blue squid from Nintendo New York because he more closely aligns with Team Rock for the upcoming world premiere Splatfest. Yes, I'm ready for that. Oh, right. I will be streaming that for 12 hours on Twitch. So I really hope to see you there <laughs> out there to support Team Rock. Of course. That's all for now. Massive, incredibly, incredibly, splatastically huge thank you to Nintendo for inviting me out to try Splatoon 3. I had a blast. I mean, obviously, because <laughs> obviously. I'm just so excited for this game to come out and I hope that I get to splat with you all real, real soon. Love you. Diku, diku, diku. Dun 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 d